Hello. <laughs> we have just had a mystery party in my um, <clears throat> Patreon group on Zoom, a murder mystery party, and my character was Major Klanger, so I brought the mustache to the party. <laughs> um, it was very fun. And uh, yeah, it was just really, it was really fun. So a virtual murder mystery party. Um, it has been the most fun two days. Victober, um, I saw that Petra in an Instagram post said that the first day of October now feels like a second Christmas Eve. And I completely agree. It was such a dreamy day. Started off the day doing some reading sprints with Petra and Ray and M Milena. And then in the middle of the day, had a Patreon meeting. Um, and then at the end of the day, had another Patreon one. I don't normally do two in a day, but we watched The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes, um, the Jeremy Brett uh, series, and we watched the, um, the Speckled Band, or The Adventure of the Speckled Band. Um, <clears throat> and I had not watched that TV series yet, and it's so good. Um, and then, of course, I have lit two different candles now. So the first one is Cider House, which is my favorite, and then my second favorite which I still love is the sugared cinnamon apple. So during the whole party, I had that going. And then <clears throat> my husband's favorite out of the ones that I got is called Harvest. And he was like, can you like that later tonight? Uh, but also this dress I got recently, it feels like Sherlock Holmes um, cosplay. Look at it. Isn't it fun? I love it. It's very autumnal. Um, <clears throat> so two days in, day and a half, I've already had a DNF. <laughs> um, the first few days before October, I just wasn't in the mood to read anything else. So I did start. And one of the things that I started was She by H. Ryder Haggard. And I, um, I did not DNF it because of the cultural insensitivity. I knew that was going to be there. I was prepared for that. What I wasn't prepared for was how incredibly plot driven it is. And I felt I wasn't getting to know the characters at all. Um, I made it a little over 60 pages and I just wasn't motivated to continue. And I thought, you know what? Don't torture yourself. It is okay. You can't win them all. <laughs> um, and so I just put it down. And I'm really happy I did because then I started The Three Brides by Charlotte Mary Young, which I've been so excited to read another Charlotte Mary Young book. It's been uh, about a year since I last read one. Yeah, Heart Sees last October. Um, and it's exactly what I was hoping it would be. Charlotte Mary Young is what I wanted Louisa May Alcott's other books to be. I loved Little Women by Louisa May Alcott, and that was it. I haven't loved any of her other books. Um, even Rose and Bloom, which I know a lot of people like, just wasn't a hit with me. And so the things that I love about Little Women, I feel are <clears throat> there in spades in Charlotte Mary Young's books. And so The Three Brides, it's this... Um, kind of span of time for this family where three of the sons are married uh, or four of the sons are married but three of the um, girls because the sons have um, like military training or just different thing they're going away from the home and so they'll all be living in the house together and getting to know their mother-in-law um, and I just love the communal aspect that her books have and the way that she has really dynamic conversations happening where they're bantering and amusing each other and just it feels very lively and just a very sentimental feel which I love and what's very interesting is one of the characters um Julius one of the brothers is albino and she does it so she just talks about it so well in that it's he's described and it says he has some trouble with his vision because he is albino and then it moves on and he's married and he's just another guy, you know? Um, so I really, really love that about it. Um, so <clears throat> I am making a chart of all the characters in my notes app because it is confusing, especially because there's one of the brothers is named Raymond. And then Julius is married to a girl named Rosamond. And I feel like Rosamond and Raymond are kind of similar when you're taking in all these characters' names. Um, but I'm really enjoying it. And uh, then today I am going to get started with Mary Barton. And I am really, really looking forward to picking back up with this. This to me feels like a very autumnal um, and wintry book. This is the season that I would pick it for. And I'm looking forward to 
on picking back up with this. And um, yeah, it's just, I haven't read it in so long. In fact, <clears throat> why don't I just read the opening lines to you of Mary Barton. So, there are some fields near Manchester, well known to the inhabitants as Green Hayes Fields, through which runs a public footpath to a little village about two miles distant. In spite of these fields being flat and low, nay, in spite of the want of wood, the great and usual recommendation of level tracts of land, there is a charm about them which strikes even the inhabitant of a mountainous district who sees and feels the effect of contrast in these commonplace but thoroughly rural fields with the busy bustling manufacturing town he left but half an hour ago. Here and there an old black and white farmhouse with its rambling outbuildings speaks of other times and other occupations than those which now absorb the population of the neighborhood. Here in their seasons may be seen the country business of haymaking, plowing, etc. May come to listen a while to the delicious sounds of rural life, the lowing of cattle, the milkmaid's call, the clatter and cackle of poultry in the old farmyards. You cannot wonder, then, that these fields are popular places of resort at every holiday time. And you would not wonder, if you could see, or I properly describe, the charm of one particular style, that it should be, on such occasions, a crowded halting place. Close by it is a deep, clear pond, reflecting in its dark green depths the shadowy trees that bend over it to exclude the sun. The only place where its banks our shelving is on the side next to a rambling farmyard, belonging to one of those old world, gabled black and white houses I named above, overlooking the field through which the public footpath leads. The porch of this farmhouse is covered by a rose tree, and the little garden surrounding it is crowded with a medley of old-fashioned herbs and flowers, planted long ago, when the garden was only the druggist shop within reach, and allowed to grow in scrambling and wild luxuriance, roses, lavender, sage, balm for tea, rosemary, pinks and wallflowers, onions and jessamine in most republican and indiscriminate order. This farmhouse and garden are within a hundred yards of the style of which I spoke, leading from the large pasture field into a smaller one, divided by a hedge of hawthorn and blackthorn. And near this style, on the further side, there runs a tale that primroses may often be found, and occasionally the blue sweet violet on the grassy hedge bank. I love how Victorian authors are willing to take their time um, <clears throat> when describing a place to you to really set the scene and give you a sense of place where you are. There was a meme going around a couple months back on Instagram and it was like Victorian authors and it shows a big passage of them describing something and then, you know, modern day authors and it's just this little sentence and people were like, like, what a joke, Victorian authors going on and on too long. And I thought I would take the Victorian passage every time. Why be cheap with words when you can go into detail and elaborate and make beautiful sentences? So uh, just excited to be spending time with this book. And then I also... I thought it would be nice if I included some of the poetry that I'll be reading this month and this poem this morning I loved so much stars. Ah, why, because the dazzling sun restored our earth to joy, have you departed every one and left a desert sky? All through the night, your glorious eyes were gazing down in mine, and with a full heart's thankful sighs, I blessed that watch divine. I was at peace and drank your beams, and they were life to me, and reveled in my changeful dreams like petrol on the sea. Thought followed thought, star followed star, through boundless regions on, while one sweet influence, near and far, thrilled through and proved us one. Why did the morning dawn to break so great, so pure a spell, and scorch with fire the tranquil cheek, where your cool radiance fell? Blood red he rose, and arrow straight, his fierce beams struck my brow. The soul of nature sprang elate, but mine sank sad and low. My lids closed down, yet through their veil I saw him blazing still, and steep in gold the misty dale and flash upon the hill. I turned me to the pillow then to call back night and see your worlds of solemn light again throb with my heart and me. It would not do, the pillow glowed, and glowed both roof and floor, and birds sang loudly in the wood, and fresh winds shook the door. The curtains waved, the wakened flies, 
were murmuring through my room, round my room, imprisoned there till I should rise and give them leave to roam. O oh, stars and dreams and gentle night, O oh, night and stars return and hide me from the hostile light that does not warm but burn, that drains the blood of suffering men, drinks tears instead of dew. Let me sleep through his blinding rain and only wake with you. Isn't that so lovely? And I do think about prior to having electric lighting, um, which did happen towards the end of the Victorian era, but I imagine um, when the Brontes lived, which was earlier in it, they did not have any. And um, you would have more of a kinship with the stars. And I think we think of night and light and night is very inadequate and kind of a negative. We have a negative uh, relationship with it, which I do love daylight, but I, I think it's a nice notion to um, be more of friends with the light that we get at night, which is beautiful. The stars and the moon are beautiful. And I know not everyone lives where you can see them that clearly, but I really like that. And I'm uh, inspired to do some moonlit walks all over again um, this month. So hopefully I will make that happen. cinnamon chocolate chip and I don't know if the cinnamon and the chocolate will both be strong and competing against each other um, but there were recipes out there for them but I'm just using this basic gluten-free scone recipe I will link it down below and um, I just it's actually for blueberry gluten-free scones um, but I just make them chocolate chip and then I'm going to add a teaspoon of cinnamon and we're going to see how this goes. When I made these a few weeks ago, just as regular gluten-free chocolate chip scones, they worked great. And I'm going to whip some cream to have with them because I am not feeling well at all today. And does it make sense that on a fatigue day, I'm using up energy making scones? Yes, it does. <laughs> because I find that um, we can't like go out somewhere, you know, when I'm, when I have a fatigue day, uh, or we could, and then I'll pay for it even more later on. And I just need something consoling to do. So, um, yesterday was really bad as well. So today I am making scones and then I think, um, the boys always do a minimum of an hour outside each day and it's beautiful. Actually, this is the first sunny day of October. Um, it's now Thursday the 6th and every single day has been overcast and rainy, which has been great for October. Um, 
And they've gone out some in the rain, actually. They're crazy, and they just like going out. Um, and they've had fun, but it hasn't been like as like I can't, I can't be like oh you have to go outside you know and now I feel like I can do it you have to go outside it's so nice out uh, and I wanted to give a bit of a reading update I <clears throat> am enjoying my reading I haven't been like no no I am enjoying it I was thinking like I haven't been blown away by anything but there's a, a, a couple things so firstly um I guess it's that my George McDonald fairy tale collection, it, it ended on such a like down note, but I'm forgetting that I, um, so the light princess was included in that. Um, and the light princess I gave, there's a stove, it's heated up. Um, I gave it five stars because I loved it so much. Um, like so much. And the language was beautiful and it was very allegorical, but I was able to understand it. I feel sometimes with allegory, I'm not always able to understand it. And I do know that George MacDonald has other books like At the Back of the North Wind and Fantastes. Fantastes, I think that's how you say it. Um, that I feel I would be very confused in. And Christy Lewis, if you're watching, Christy is smarter than me and is able to understand symbolism and motifs literary devices just a lot better than I can um and Christy was very confused when reading some George McDonald stuff so I'm like if Christy was confused what does this mean for me um and I'm gonna open the cinnamon up and I just oh, I love to smell it oh it smells so good got some there and take this off though um so I love the light princess but the other stories were all like too maximum three star reads and I was bummed because I thought oh you know what maybe when I get to the longer stories in the collection like the shorter stories maybe not so when I get to um the Karasan or Karasoin I could never tell how they were saying it with a Scottish accent like how I'm supposed to say it um and I just kept not loving it uh so that was a bummer because that was like a 14 hour audio collection all of his fairy tales. I have my salt and I am really bad at measuring into it. So I always have to dump off some excess. I feel like these are really hard to get things measured into though. Okay. I'm going to stir that all around. Is that everything? I feel like I'm forgetting something, but everything so far. Okay. I think it is everything so, so far. Now, um, one reason why I think these scones turned out so well the last time I made them is that I grated the butter and it's thank you to this recipe that suggests grating the butter. And that is in some recipes you'll find out there. Um, and also because our, um, this is so annoying. I can't think of the name, but the thing that can like crush your butter, biscuit cutter, not a biscuit cutter. Anyhow, the thing that cuts up the butter it, it, um, broke a few years ago and I have never had it since. Um, so I'm just going to grate the butter a half a cup, AKA one stick. So it was disappointing that I started off loving the light princess, giving it five stars, you know, just, it was so beautiful and delightful and lovely. And then not enjoying anything nearly that much again. Um, so yesterday, I started, well, I went ahead and I just wanted to listen to a sample of the Raffles audiobook that I have, Raffles, um, the amateur cracksman. And I had bought this audiobook on Audible years ago. And I started listening to it and immediately I knew, like, I don't like his voice. I don't like it. I'm very particular now about narrator voices and I, I don't like how high pitched it is. I don't like high pitched voices to narrate me audiobooks, male or female. And I actually have a whole video coming out about my favorite Victorian audiobooks. Um, so I was like, okay, well, I will be sticking to the physical book of that. And I also downloaded downloaded the audiobook of Jane Eyre. Kieran has finished reading Jane Eyre, and I'm terrified as to what he thought of it. But I told him, don't tell me any of your thoughts until we sit down for our discussion together. And he's going to tell me. And But then I also was like, what will I read? after my Jane Eyre audiobook. You, you know, you like want to know that you have plenty of things lined up. So I went ahead and started the audiobook of The Master of Ballantrae by Robert Louis Stevenson. 
I'm only about 30 minutes into it, so it's still early days. I think I'm enjoying it. I'm just always paranoid about having another Victober full of DNFs, so I'm constantly kind of like leery about it. Um, I think I'm, I'm going to enjoy it and feeling hopeful about it. It's historical fiction. King George is on the throne. It's in Scotland and there's things to do with an inheritance and um, yeah, you're very like up close and personal with this one family, but I haven't felt like I've gotten to know them that well yet. So I'm trying to remember like maybe did Treasure Island take me a little while to get into? I can't remember. I'm just always hoping, you know, when you have a five-star read from an author, you want every single book, to, you know, to be as excited about that. So I think, um, the next, I think I'll just be divided between Jane Eyre and the Master of Ballantrae over the next few days. So then the book that I think I told you I switched over to is The Three Brides by Charlotte Mary Young. And that I am currently very consumed by that. I'm really enjoying it. There are the one thing that will hold Charlotte Mary Young back from ever being as beloved as um, Elizabeth Gaskell is that she does periodically have these chapters that I find very boring where it's like very a thinly veiled way to talk about issues in society um, in the plot. Uh, so there are a few chapters here and though that I'm like, okay, come on, can we like move on from this discussion about masculinity and femininity? But then it gets back to the plot and I just find she writes really lively characters. They feel so real to me. And um, so the three brides is, I think I said in another clip, it's about these three newlywed sons and they're all coming to stay in their home um, for a period of time. And so you get to know the three girls and, not girls, young women. Um, and you definitely have favorites out of the three, let me tell you. Um, no, I'm not going to tell you who my favorite is because I don't want to bias you just in case you wouldn't feel the same as I do. So here's the buttermilk and I did not have buttermilk. So I just mixed together some vinegar with some of the, um, you can make buttermilk apparently with dairy free milk. I did not know this until the recipe mentioned it. And I typically like to do dairy free milk. Um, okay. Just stirring this all together. They say don't over mix it. So it's a little bit stressful. Um, but yes, so much scenes of domesticity. There was a whole Christmas party scene and it had some really funny things going on in it. But there's one of the three brides who is drama, drama, drama. And so she's like having a major meltdown at the same time that funny things are happening. So it's very slice of life. And I love that it has seasonal awareness in it. And um, had a couple very exciting chapters to do with horse racing um, that just happened. Uh, so yes, all in all, very much enjoying that. Excited to continue. And I've done this week's chapters of Country Stories by Mary Russell Mitford. Two out of the three I thoroughly enjoyed. So I am, um, I'm reading three chapters each week. and I'm very excited to read next week's chapters. I might get a move on with it. I'm not sure. Um, and still really, really enjoying Emily Bronte's poetry. Um, it is beautiful. And I said in a comment to somebody who was saying like, oh, I'm reading it too. Like soul stirring is kind of, it's, I, I don't know what, what other phrase to use. It's so beautiful. So I hope you have enjoyed the couple of poems that I have included with it. Um, so I'm going to finish mixing these up and then I will show you um, them when they're on the pan, ready to go in the oven. And then when they're out and finished and you can see the end product. So here they are all cut up and ready to go. And you can see the chocolate chips are teeny because these are mini chips. So I'm gonna put them in the oven and see how they go. Can I have some? You want some? <laughs> okay. It's out of the oven and um, you can see I've changed. It's one of those fall days that start out, you're like, ooh, sweater weather. And then by the afternoon, you're like, nope, t-shirt. Um, see if I can tip this without making it spill out. The scones turned out great. The cinnamon is perfect with it. So I have a big dollop of cream that I'm going to have with it. Mm. This just, you know, 
a freshly baked good can cheer anyone up, even on a fatigue day. I'm honestly surprised how well the cinnamon works with it. That makes me want to just have cinnamon chocolate chip cookies also. Um, I have a cup of my rooibos tea with some honey and some cream, and I'm going to watch episode five of Little Dorrit. The boys are doing their hour outside. We even did school this morning, so I feel this is very deserved. <laughs> and um, then I'll get back to reading um, The Three Brides because it's so good.